Hey, what is going on, guys? Joe, 690ADV, Radio 690ADV. What's going on? Welcome to the podcast. Don't forget, hit subscribe. Give us a like. Give us a comment if you can. iTunes, Spreaker, whatever platform that you're on. Podbean, you can catch us on all of it. iTunes, Google Podcast, and Spotify. Anyway, on to the podcast. Communication systems. Are they worth it? Um, do you need one? Is it something that you should put in your helmet? Is it something that you should have when you're writing? Is it a distraction? Can it cause issues uh, with your uh, mental focus when you're writing and doing the things that you do? Uh, my personal opinion, <laughs> I love them, man. I absolutely love them. I love the Bluetooth headsets. I think they're fantastic. They do... Uh, really, really neat things, especially depending on what type of Bluetooth system you get. You can get cheap ones and you can get really expensive ones. Now, I will say this, that you do get what you pay for pretty much in a Bluetooth system for your helmet. And it depends on what type of helmet you have, whether it is a off-road like an MX helmet or a modular helmet, or if it is a full closed face um, or a dual sport helmet. So that will dictate what type of communication system that you get and, uh, putting it in there. Now that is probably one of the most difficult things is, is once you do get it is putting it in because it takes a little bit of time and to get it just right. And it's not so much the microphone as it is the earpieces. We're going to get into that in just a minute, but are they a distraction? Are they worth the money? Are they something that everybody should have? Or should you just get basically earbuds, put them in your ear, slide your helmet over and go that direction? Everybody likes to have something when they're writing, especially because it gets pretty, even though it's writing and it's awesome, it can get a little dull at times, especially if you're doing road travel and you're on the highway and you're punching down those miles and you're doing those things, it can get kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? Yeah, boring. <laughs> it can get kind of boring if you don't have something to listen to, like a podcast, for instance, like what you're listening to right now. I'm just kidding. If you listen to your podcast or listen to this podcast or whatever you do, that's awesome. I really like listening to podcasts. I was um, not real into podcasting. Uh, but the more I started digging into it, it's really kind of cool. It helps pass time and you can learn a lot too. There's a lot of really neat podcasts on motorcycle stuff that's out there. So uh, that's why we started the 690 or the Radio 690 ADV um, so that uh, maybe you can listen to our stuff and pass a little bit of the time and maybe pick up a little bit of knowledge or some interesting uh, facts and information. But is it distracting? I mean, I think it can be distracting a little bit if you get a little into it. I like to say, especially on the music side of it, you know, if you start playing like that, uh, feel good or that, that rock that gets you, you know, gets you going, you know, like your favorite, you know, heavy metal song, if that's what you're into or any of that type stuff that gets your adrenaline flowing. Um, if you're off road or even on the street, you're in the twisties and stuff like that. Sometimes it can get you pumped up so much that you, can maybe over exceed your writing ability or your skills because you're just, you're, you're, you're getting into it and you're feeling it. I know because that happens to me every so often. It doesn't happen a ton, but it, but it does happen. And, uh, I have to catch myself sometimes, especially it's usually on the road. I get a little more than what I'm comfortable on doing sometimes. And I have to back myself off. So in that respect, yes, I would say that yes, you could get yourself in uh, a situation to where it could maybe be a little bit of a distraction. I'm not going to say it's a huge distraction, but I will say that it can be a distraction. So with that being said, as far as, you know, just riding on the highway and things like that and pull, punching down miles or, or, you know, having to do, you know, 50, 60 miles between town to town and stuff like that. No, I don't think so. And I, I think it really is an awesome thing to have, you know, a communication system in your helmet for Bluetooth to your cell phone. And that way you can play your music through iTunes or through Google Play or Spotify or whatever you have. It doesn't matter. Um, it just helps pass the time a little bit and it keeps you, it keeps your sanity a little bit too while you're writing. So, 
I think that that part is really uh, awesome about them. And uh, we'll get into the second half of it too um, about the communication systems. And we're going to talk about a couple of different communication systems. Um, and the, the system that I have in my helmet, if you uh, want to know what I use, uh, maybe you want to go get that. And uh, it's, you know, uh, we'll get into that in, 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 in just a minute. But uh, yeah, as far as passing time and distractions and stuff like that, I think, yes, it can be a distraction. I don't want to dig in, you know, and I don't want to over you know, talk about it too much, but it can be if you put on that stuff that gets your adrenaline flowing and stuff like that, and maybe you can exceed your skills and ability. So on that aspect, yes. Other than that, like I said, it's nice because not only that, you can do hands-free calling on them. And so like if your wife calls or your girlfriend or one of your kids or something like that, and you're going down the highway, um, you can't answer the phone. And you can have your helmet on and you can talk to them. Now, I will say this, that when I say you get what you pay for, you really get what you pay for. Because some communication systems, they don't do the phone portion very well. Uh, they just store it out. You know, they're not real good at, at, at speeds of more than, say, you know, 50 miles an hour. You can't hear the other person very well. Uh, that can be a real issue, you know. And I'll tell you of a couple of systems that I've had that actually do work and you can actually ride at highway speeds and you can still use your phone and stuff like that here in just a second. But uh, yeah, you know, the different things that you can do, like the phone calls, not only that, rider to rider communication. That's the really, really cool thing. So if you have buddies that you ride with and a lot of the newer communication headsets, the Bluetooth, they allow you to connect to different brands or different companies' headsets, which is really kind of nice because... Um, you guys don't have to all have the exact same Bluetooth as long as, you know, it supports a specific Bluetooth, you know, uh, deal like 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, whatever, yada, yada, yada. You can, you can look that up and then know whenever you purchase your Bluetooth communication, if it allows to connect to third party communication headsets, mine just so happens that it will. And it's really nice. And it's not priced too bad because I've done both sides of the spectrum. I've done the cheap ones. I've done the expensive ones. And what I've done is I've figured out that if you, and I always tell you in my videos, remember youtube.com slash 690ADV, research is king. It really is. Research is king because if you do enough research, a lot of times you can find the good stuff for a real reasonable price. And that is really, really awesome. So the different types of communications, music, turn by turn navigation. So like if you have your maps on, on your phone, it will send the audio over to your helmet and it'll tell you your turn by turns. Phone calls. You can talk to your kids, wife, girlfriend, friends, whatever, if you need to, when you're on the road or if you're just pulled over somewhere and you want to use it and you want to make sure that you can hear them, like say you're pulled over to park or something like that. Rider to rider communication. That to me is awesome. For me, what I mainly use it for when I'm out on my bike, my family usually knows they normally don't call me during the daylight hours when I'm on my trip because they know that I'm riding and they just try not to distract me. But for communications to rider to rider, that is a big thing for me because it's nice because some of these have distances of up to 500 meters, which is roughly, you know, 1500 feet, um, seven, nine, heck, some of them even go up to a mile, mile and a half, depending on what it is. And then they have some that are basically on a piggyback system, like a military that basically the closest rider, and then it goes from that rider to the next rider to the next rider, and they can get up to almost two miles, which is really cool because that way, when you're riding, distance is king when you're on motorcycles. You don't want everybody to be bunched up together when you're on the highway or even when you're off-road. That's really where they come in handy is when you're off-road. That way you can space each other out and stuff like that. And if you're on a nice dry road where the dust is coming up and you can't see the guy in front of you, if you come to a fork in the road, it's nice because he can say, hey, I'm coming up to a fork in the road. I'm taking a left. So just to let you know, take the left because you can go straight or take a right. So guess what? It allows you to stay together as a basically as a riding team and it cuts down on people getting lost. It also lets you know that you can talk to other riders if they're getting tired or they're thirsty or they're hungry or anything like that, there's no guesswork or, Hey, I'm low on fuel. That is awesome about communication systems because you can talk to each other and do these things. And if you're out of range, guess what? You can call that rider on his phone and it'll ring in his helmet 
if you do get separated and you are on a highway and you call and say, Hey man, we got separated. Um, I'm in front of you. I'm about five miles ahead. I just pulled off at exit mile marker. Yada, yada, yada. I'm stopping at this gas station. I'm going to go in and get a Snickers bar and a Dr. Pepper. Anyway, that is really awesome about the communication systems is allows you to do that. Not only that, my communication system allows me to connect to my cameras. So you wonder how I do my vlogs and stuff like that. Yes, I basically have a Bluetooth headset that connects to my GoPro and it also connects to my Senna uh, prism camera and it allows me to shoot my videos. And what it does is it sends the Bluetooth audio in high definition over to the cameras and it records it directly to it as I'm doing my stuff. So if you ever wondered, a lot of guys know, but some new riders may not know that. That's how that's achieved and that's how I get that done. Now, on to communication systems. <laughs> what are the good ones? What are the bad ones? Well, there's too many of them out there for me to sit there and tell you, you know, go get this one, go get that one, go get this one, go get that one. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I <laughs> don't get paid by anybody. Um, all of my communication systems I've purchased myself. And there are too many to talk about. So I'm only going to really talk about the ones that I have used and the ones that I like and the ones that I'm using right now. So I've done the really, really cheap ones. You can find them on eBay. You can find them on Amazon as well. I'm not going to promote or condone and say they're great or they're not great. Um, because if I tell you it's great and then you get it and you don't like it, then you're going to say that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I don't particularly want to just specifically say one. I'm going to, I'm going to give two brands that I use and I like, and they do a very, very good job. And remember, research is king. You know, if you want to get something like mine, go get it. It's pretty much proven. It's 690 approved in my eyes. I think it's awesome, fantastic, and it's going to work great. And it will work in all helmets that you purchase, okay? Because I have MX helmets for our dirt bikes, and I also have dual sport helmets uh, for the day-to-day -day stuff. And it just so happens that my Scorpion AT950 has my comm system in it and it is a modular dual sport. So it works with both because it works within my Araya, my KTM, and it also, which is a closed face, uh, dual sport helmet and it works with my modular. So I know it will work with both of those. So without further ado, my system that I have is the Senna. Okay. I have the Senna. I think it's the S10 and it's, I mean, it's great. And I just stumbled across this on accident because I have a Uclear, all right, a Uclear system that I have in some of my other helmets. And I really love the Uclear. It's nice because you can put earbuds in so you can really, really, doesn't matter how fast you're going, you can hear perfectly with those earbuds and it plugs into the back of the set, but you can also hear, use the, um, um, the, the, the ear pods that, that basically hook inside of the helmet. Okay. So the Uclears are really, really nice. I've had Uclear for many years. They do a very good job and they're not cheap. I'm not going to lie to you, but you can get a two pack for about a couple hundred bucks, maybe 250 bucks. And they work really well. Uh, they do allow you to connect to other headsets. That's one of the main reasons that I have done that because in the past, what we did is we used to buy communication systems that only worked with that specific brand. And that means you had to sit there and go to all your buddies and say, go buy this communication system or we can't chat. So that really, it was cool in the beginning, but it became a drag later in our adventure trips over many, many years. So what we did is people just like to get what they get because not everybody's going to have the same budget as you. So it makes it nice that if you have one that can connect to theirs, they may have one a little cheaper or heck, they may have one a little bit nicer. It's nice that they can all connect to each other. Doesn't matter what brand you got. So that is a really nice thing. Uclear does allow you to do that. They do have firmware updates all the time. Also, the Senna does too. So onto my Senna, that's what's on you see on my YouTube channel. I ride all the time on my Scorpion helmet. That's the uh, S10, I think that's what it is. And, uh, it does a great job. God, I tell you what, the little jog dial inside, it's just a big wheel that spins. It allows you to go up and down with the volume. It allows me to change between music, phone, 
in the communication device to basically connect to writers so that I can connect to uh, people when I want to, and I can disconnect and go back to my music. It's, and it's very, very simple. It's just a couple of clicks on the, on the, on the jog dial, which is really nice. It has a boom microphone. And it comes around the front and it has a really nice foam padding around it that cuts down on tons of the noise. So whenever you're writing and uh, it works really, really, really well. And it sounds nice too. If you listen to our YouTube videos, it, it really does sound pretty good. Now, the earpieces, they're awesome. They come with different levels of how they connect. They usually connect with Velcro and sticky on the back and they come with different pad settings depending on how your helmet's set up. Now the one thing that you want to do and you really want to be thinking of this whenever you're doing a communication system, when you put your helmet on, if you notice when you put your helmet on your ears will fold up sometimes so you have to get your ears on fold. Well when you put speakers in your helmet it can make it even a little tighter uh, in the ear part. So you can get what we like to call as cauliflower ear and it really starts to get irritated over time if you don't have those speakers in the right spot. So that's something that can really take a lot of time to basically adjust those speakers to get them just right. So if you take your helmet and you flip it upside down, you look inside and right where the ear pieces go, which usually you can just put the helmet on and put your fingers up, you know, or you can just kind of slide your thumb and then touch the side and then pull the helmet off. And then you know roughly where it's at. If you fold that inner liner of your helmet up, you will notice in there, some will have pockets, some will not have pockets. If it has pockets, that doesn't necessarily mean that those speakers are going to fit. So you may have to make a few modifications. Remember, do this at your own discretion, do it your own way. But remember, don't modify the helmet too much because you don't want to basically, you know, uh, take away from the integrity and the protection of what that helmet can do for you. So do that at your own risk. But I'm just saying, if you're really smart about it, you can basically get those pockets to enlarge a little bit. And sometimes they just kind of just drop right in there and everything's good to go. Now here's the part that's not so much fun is that though, even though they created an ear pocket inside of that helmet, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to basically match where your ears are at. And you're going to know because you'll put them in, you'll put some music on, and then you'll turn it up and it'll be all muffled out. That basically tells me that the microphone, I mean, not the microphone, but the speakers are too low usually. So you'll have to bring those speakers up. So remember, it's going to take a little time and you're going to have to adjust those speakers. So, but once you get them dialed in on this center, I'm telling you, it is a rock concert inside of my helmet. I mean, it is a rock concert. It is clear. It's got bass. It, it's fantastic. It doesn't matter how fast I'm going on my bike. It doesn't matter how windy it is. I can hear my music. I can talk to you. I can do communication. It doesn't matter. I don't drive a hundred miles an hour, but it's 70 miles an hour. Butter, 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 butter. It's perfect. And I'm telling you right now, it works really good. Now here's the downside to the Santa headset. It's not cheap. It's not super expensive either, but it's not cheap. It's about 250 bucks. Sometimes you can find them on sale for right at about $199 but they are really good. I'm going to endorse it hundred percent and it works with more than just, um, you know, <laughs> it works with basically almost every Bluetooth communication set you can connect to it. But not only that, if you ever want to get into mode of logging or you want to record your stuff and have really good audio while you're out on your trips, guess what? GoPros. Now listen to me on this. It doesn't work with all GoPros. You're going to want to get a GoPro 4 or a GoPro 3 Hero. It doesn't work with the small cubes. It does not work with the 5, 6, or the new 7. But if you have a GoPro 3 or a GoPro 4, you can go to Senna and you can get the backpack. That's what I have on mine. And it's a little backpack that connects on the back of your GoPro. And it's got a, basically it's got a piggyback on it that connects to that. And then your headset will connect to that and then it will send the audio through that piggyback or that pigtail right to the video. So that way it will record 90% of all my videos that you see me shooting back at myself on my bike when I do my rant and rides. Guess what? Done on my GoPro. I think GoPro really has the best. I'm not saying the newer ones, but the older ones, they really kind of set the bar for everyone else on how the action cameras work. Now, I do also have the center prism, which is the prism. It's the, basically the square block. It's a long one. I don't use it as much only because it's a little harder to set up, but the picture is beautiful. 
and the audio goes directly to it. It's made for it. So it just connects directly to it and it does a really, really good job. So, and it uses Bluetooth. The other kicker to it is, is if you watch my two minute tips, I have a Senna Bluetooth. Basically it's an intercom mic. It allows me to get 10, 20, 30, 50, even a hundred feet away. And I can record directly to my cameras, which is really kind of cool. So I get best bang for buck on those right there. So, um, but as far as the two systems that I have used that I really like, and I would endorse, I would say Senna is the number one for me. And then I would drop down to you clear. Now, other manufacturers that are out there, God, there's so many shark. Uh, <laughs> you got all the Chinese knockoff ones. And I'm just saying some of those Chinese ones are awesome and they're really cheap and they work really, really, really good. You know, um, you've got chatterbox, you've got, God, there's so many of them out there, but you know, these are the ones that I use and some of them, like I said, are going to be expensive and some of them are going to be, you know, intermediate price range. Uh, but I, I, I fully endorse the Senna headset because it just, it just flat works. It really does. And not only that, once you charge it up, God, man, I, I don't think I've ever had one die. It'll definitely go a whole day. Music, talking, whatever you want to do, you charge it. It doesn't take very long to charge and it just does a really good job. And not only that, the sound system that they have in it is just fantastic. The, the speakers are just, just awesome. It, it does. It sounds like a rock concert in my helmet. So that's one of the nice things about the Senna's. So if you're thinking about putting a communication set, or if you've got a communication set that you're not happy with, maybe you might want to look into one of these two and put them in your helmet, because I think you'll be very, very happy uh, if you purchase either one. I think you're, you're, you're really going to like it. But if you're truly on a budget um, and you're on the fence about a communication, email me, 69080v at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to try to point you in the right direction. Uh, maybe something that I've bought in the past or something like that. If you let me know what your budget is and I'll do my best to, my best to, to point you in the right direction on getting a communication set for your helmet, because I think you will be happy and you will be pleased. And if you just go riding for yourself, it's kind of nice to just have some music in your ear while you're bumping around, maybe some nice, good, you know, country or some classic rock or, or if you're into heavy metal or any of that type of stuff, it's really, really, really nice because it allows you to, it's like you're riding in a car when you're listening to your radio. So communications, I think they're fantastic. I think they can be a small distraction. I don't think they're a huge distraction. And I think every rider should have at least a communication set in one of their helmets, uh, just so that it's, it's nice and it allows you to get outside of the box and enjoy your day while you're out riding. And especially if you got to punch those miles down on the highway or if you're alone. Anyway, communication systems, think about it. I'm Joe, Radio 690 ADV. Man, I appreciate you guys stopping in and listening on the podcast. And hopefully this helps a little bit on communication systems and may point you in the right direction on what you're looking for. And maybe it sums up a little bit of the information of how they work and what they're good for. And if you have any questions, like I said, 690 ADV, gmail.com. And don't forget, youtube.com slash 690 ADV for all of our videos. We have a hundred plus and don't forget our podcasts. They come out on Sundays and they come out on Thursdays, unless I get too busy and then they just come out whenever they come out. But I appreciate you guys. You guys have a fantastic day and enjoy your weekend. Get out, ride, find your adventure at 690. We love you. 690 out.